Hi, my name's Keith. I recently completed an overhaul of an EMS Synthi Model A, and in this video I'll give you a tech overview and then set up some demo sounds to show you the capabilities of the synth. Let's start by looking at the front panel. Starting on the left, there are three oscillators. The first two oscillators are calibrated so that they could be used melodically. In other words, they can track together. The third oscillator is really only useful as an LFO. Each oscillator has two outputs. Oscillator 1 has sine and ramp outputs. Oscillator 2 has square, square wave and triangle wave. And oscillator 3 has square wave and triangle wave as well. In addition to the level of each of the outputs, each oscillator has a shape control to change the symmetry of the output waveform. Below the oscillators is a noise generator, and it's continuously variable between approximately white and pink noise, and there's a level output. Below that, there are two amplifier modules. Uh, the amplifiers have a level and also a pan control, and they control the output to these two built-in speakers and also to two line-outs um, here on the, the, uh, the jack field. Across the top, there's a filter. Um, it's a, a diode ladder filter, so it's not quite as musical sounding as the Moog filter. It's a little more raw. Uh, to the right of that, there's a ring mod level. Below that is the envelope generator. However, it's not the typical attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. The stages are called attack, on, decay, and off. The first stage is attack, which is exactly what you would expect. It sets the attack rate. After that stage, the envelope stays at a fixed level for a time determined by the on stage. And after that length of time, typically half a second or a second or so, it'll go into the decay phase. Now, if you're manually triggering, triggering the envelope, either from an external keyboard or from this attack button, and you can see every time I hit it, the uh, on light lights up, saying that the envelope is actually going through its phases. Um, you won't even have to worry about the, the last phase, which is called off. But what this stage does is it's like having a built-in LFO. And if I change it from the manual setting down to a lower setting, you'll see that it starts to automatically trigger the envelope at some particular rate. And the lower I make this no, or value of this knob, the faster the envelope triggers. So this is basically a re-trigger, an automatic re-trigger, and you can set the, uh, the rate for the re-trigger. Now, there are two outputs for the uh, envelope generator. One is called trapezoid, which is just the CV level, which is what you would expect from an envelope generator. However, it has a VCA built in, and there's also a signal level output. So you don't have to feed this into a separate VCA because there's one dedicated to the envelope. Under that, there's the reverb module. Inside, there's a spring reverb tank. The two uh, controls are to set the mix from uh, dry to wet and also the level. And this is also CV controllable, the mix. Below that, there are two input channel levels. You can bring other audio sources or uh, control voltage sources into the synthy, and this sets the, uh, the gain stage of those signals. Below that, there's a joystick controller, and it creates two control voltages, one for up-down and one for left-right. And there are two range controls that set the levels for each of the axes. Also at the top, there's a meter, and you can patch any of the audio or control signals in the synth to the meter so that you can visually see the levels. Across the top, there are outputs for headphones, the meter, also known as the scope, left and right line level, control voltage outputs, an interface for an external keyboard. That's how you can get external uh, triggers or control voltages into the synth. Uh, inputs, high level inputs for line level devices, and also uh, 600 ohm microphone inputs. In the middle of the synth, there's a patch matrix. All the outputs of all of the modules appear on the horizontal axis and all of the inputs of the modules appear on the vertical axis. For example, I can take the output of oscillator 1 and patch it to output number 1, which will uh, go into the speaker. There we go. Or, for example, I could take that same oscillator 1 output, 
patch it into the filter and then take the filter output and patch it through output one. Now I'll open the back and show you the inside. The inside of the synthy is dominated by three circuit boards known as the A, B, and C boards. The power supply is on the left hand side of the chassis and part of the A board. The white ceramic looking components are high watt resistors and I replaced the original resistors as heat damage had caused them to drift in value and you can see some charring at the top of the circuit board there. Below the resistors are three power transistors and two trim pots and they're used to set the regulated voltage levels. Below the power supply is a pair of VCA circuits along with the output amplifiers and they're based on discrete amplifier chips. Those are the uh, black rectangle uh, components there. And uh, these chips are no longer being manufactured so they're very hard to find. Also on the A board is the amplifier for the reverb and it uses a similar chip. The uh, copper strip on the amp chip is a heat sink uh, and the uh, spring reverb tank is at the top of the chassis. On the right of board B is the circuit for the envelope generator and the trim pots are used to set the useful ranges for each of the envelope stages. The filter circuit is located down the center of board B. The diodes in the diode ladder are those small black glass components and the trim pot is used to set the nominal frequency that uh, the filter self oscillates at. The ring mod circuit is in the upper left hand corner of the board and the trim pots are used to set the fundamental and harmonic signal rejection. The input channel amps are also on board B. Board C is mostly covered by the three oscillator circuits. Notice that oscillator 3 doesn't have the extra circuitry and trim pot needed to tune its scale to track the other oscillators. This is why oscillator 3 is only really useful as an LFO or for non-pitched type effects. The extra trim pot for oscillator 1 is to set the symmetry of its sine wave output. The noise source and the meter amps are also on board C. The joystick enclosure is the red box in the corner of the chassis and of course the speakers are at the top. Now I'll set up some demo sounds.
I've also created a second video showing the synthy being played through a MIDI to CV converter alongside a Moog source. Thanks for watching.